There's only two ways they can stop the magazine. One is through legal action, and the other is to shoot me. It ruthlessly uncovers crime and corruption at all levels. Gangsters, crooked police, dodgy councillors, small-time hoods and petty criminals. Even the most minor offence could land you in the pages of the paper. This is the world of the digger, and nobody's safe from it. He's a liar! He must have some guts to print some of the things that he prints. They go to issues that the mainstream press don't seem to want to touch. My name is David. I'm a documentary filmmaker. Over the next few weeks, I've been working as the paper's court photographer, nailing paedophiles, gangsters and petty crooks. I'll be gaining unique access into the digger's operation. How will my relationship with the vigilante editor develop? And what will I ultimately learn? Gotcha. This is the heart of digger country. With sales of over 10,000 copies a week, the pocket-sized crime magazine has cornered a market untouched by the mainstream media. I think the digger's a very good paper and it tells you, you know, different things, you know, about different people, you know, and their crimes. It's got a good viewpoint, some it, you know what I mean, about naming and shaming paedophiles. It allows people in the community to know, yeah. know who to what's going, going on. And what's going on. Aye. Printed weekly by an underground press, the digger sells for 50 pence at over 100 news agents across the city. People buy it because they like to read what's in it. People buy it to see if their name's in it. And people buy it to maybe get a good laugh at somebody else's expense. I've been in the jail with people that's been in the digger and that. Really? Aye, and they're all, oh, look, you're in the digger, oh, dinner the me, oh, oh, happy and all that. <laughs> yeah. Exposing crime and corruption is its main agenda, and the digger suspects everyone. Even the police and the legal establishment have been blasted by the magazine. He's a shite bag. That's exactly what he is. But he prints things about people and no, 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 even, he's not even got the decency to face them. It's the whole system. There's nothing is exempt. But the digger and its editor are creating enemies on both sides of the law. Editors weren't putting the planet to be liked. They were putting the planet to be disliked by authority. And I would imagine this guy is probably the most disliked journalist on the planet at the moment. James Cruikshank is the founder and driving force of the magazine. With various threats made on his life, he insists on wearing dark glasses. The crooks and the criminals and the scum that have influence hate journalists because they put the information out. This house is like a metaphor for the digger, a sort of a symbol of defiance. See, that house should be knocked down, but the people in that house that are saying, you're not knocking down my house because it's my house. If you're going to knock my house down, you're going to give me a better house. So they're saying, I'm not taking your shit, I'm staying here and fighting. And that's what the digger's doing. Cruikshank's right-hand man is Chris Diamond. He's the digger's features writer. What these people hate is publicity. And if you could point at them and say, that person in that house deals drugs and is responsible for deaths. And if that means that they can't pursue their trade or have to move on, well, that's a result. The final member of the team is cub reporter Aaron. He's recently been awarded a press card, giving him the freedom of the sheriff court. I've taken the job of photographer in order to gain a deeper understanding of what it's like to be a digger man. Who's this character that we're going to get today, Emily? Um, he's, he's a man who's pled guilty to running a brothel. Running a brothel? He's one of the two we've had over the last couple of weeks. Seems to be a bit of a police crackdown on brothels and stuff, so he's up in court due for sentencing. I'm feeling apprehensive for my first assignment. Photographing criminals is a risky job. The digger has gone through numerous photographers over the last year. Might have been in the toilet and come out. He's floating around in there. She's hopefully going to come back out and <coughs> tell us if he's in there. He's really tall, shaven head, thick eyebrows, 
shaven head, thick eyebrows. There's a fucking million guys that look like that. That's him coming out. That's him coming out. Yeah, yeah, that one coming through the. That's him. Through the. There we go. My first assignment has gone well. I'd photographed one of Glasgow's biggest gangsters and he actually stood there and posed. Did you get pictures of him? Yeah, yeah, just look. Come in the way out. Oh, fucking magic. <laughs> oh, beauty. He's an ugly looking <laughs> bastard, isn't he? Unbelievable. Had you known of this character before? Yes. This, char this character uh, yes. is trying to uh, threaten us. So he knows about the digger? Oh yes he does. <laughs> he's scared of the digger magazine. So scared that he's been telling his sidekicks to try and intimidate us. But there's more to the digger than naming and shaming criminals. It sees a wider conspiracy between our corrupt legal system and organised crime. We're saying the police are not busting the drug dealers that they need to bust. And we're saying the reason for that is that they're either scared or they're on the take. Nothing's as it seems in the eyes of the digger. The team are investigating an alleged gas explosion. But Cruikshank doesn't buy that theory. He sees it as part of the city's ongoing drugs war. 25 years that man was in that shop. 25 years, no. You could see the sadness in his wife's face. We're just uh, interviewing some people about what's happened, and we're, we'll be writing a story about that this weekend. Right, right, so there was no sign of gas leakages. Well, that's that ruled out, anyway. I mean, there's assassinations on the street. They're blowing up shops, because there's a drugs war on. And that can be easily stopped. They've got the manpower, they've got the resources, but they won't stop it, because somebody's got their finger in the pie. That is a beauty. With its provocative reporting, the digger itself is often taken to court. I think what they're trying to do is good, but um, I think they need to be a wee bit more cautious about some of the allegations they're making. Cruikshank is going to see his lawyer regarding the latest charge, a breach of the peace offence after a court scuffle. He believes the police are using it to discredit him. The complaint has been pursued by, by top brass in Strathclyde Police because I'm the digger. Because the digger has consistently criticised the, the police's fight in the war on drugs. Charges like this are common for the magazine, but threats to the paper don't just come through the courts. There are threats overt and covert to the digger yeah. in the courts and in a slightly less formal way. I've got a guy phoning up uh, saying, you know, that I was going to, I was going to get killed the same way Veronica Gurin was killed. I mean, most people who make threats, they don't say who they are. And the reason they don't say they are, who they are is because they're scared. This isn't exactly reassuring, but I carry on with the naming and shaming campaign. Given the risk, why does Cruikshank do it? It's the oppression, the injustice, the unfairness of life, the whole miserable existence that is life. Is, is, is in an odd way a kind of driving force for me. Criminals can only operate successfully anonymously. Now what happens is if I identify them, say in a crime stop, right, say so-and-so did that, this, this, and that, and that, and that, and that, right, it's not so much that that annoys them, it's who's reading it that finds out that annoys them. I mean, I have no sympathy for these people. Yeah. None at all. They're not, they're, they don't contribute anything. They sponge off the state. If they're not doing that, they're doing it through drug dealing. If I'm gonna write about drug dealers and make money out of it, then why shouldn't I? Because if drug dealers are making money out of it, why shouldn't I make money off the drug dealers? Lovely. In 2001, after a stint in New York as a freelance journalist, Cruikshank returned to Scotland penniless. He ended up in a terror block in one of Glasgow's rougher schemes. 
the Glasgow City Council and other organisations gave money where residents like me could come in and sit down together and talk about, you know, what do we need for our community? What would you like to see done? It's a great idea, but it turned out to just to be a massive scam. People weren't really given any power at all. And I thought the magazine would be a good chance to reflect those views, okay. written in a, in a sort of tabloid style. So you're, what would you say, exposing corruption within the community at that level? I don't think corruption is too strong a word, it's more trying to get information out there that wasn't coming out. In a way, I have to admit that I think he thought he was, he was doing things for, for people who couldn't do for themselves. This was footage he took when he just started the magazine. Fur Hill Basin, it's part of this little football ground. So it's one of the printers there. All the inks, the powders that used to use for the printer, it all took place in here. He was only selling 200 copies a week, but was already attracting the attention of local criminals. What, what was the nature of that? Trying to smash down my door, covering it in paint, threatening me as I go in the front door. If you can see the paint over the door. The threats got so bad, he was forced to leave his home. I mean, you're still getting threats to this day. Mm -hmm. And how do you cope with that on a sort of daily basis? Makes me stronger. The more threats that you get, the stronger I get, yeah. Despite this show of defiance, there's still a sense of unease as we walk around the area. See that house there? Do you know whose house that is? The drugs gang. Well, let's keep walking. I think that could be one of them there. So you have to watch around here because uh, this is this is um, this community is run by criminals. Police don't run this community or the council. Criminals run it. While we're filming, a violent assault is taking place in the street. There's a scrap. Look going on. I think those junkies were involved in that. The ones that walked away. They crossed the street as we came round the corner. Blood coming out of his mouth. They must have stabbed him or something. Yeah. Things are turning nasty, but the story doesn't end there. We'd filmed the potential suspect fleeing the scene, and Cruikshank wanted the shot for the paper, so I handed it over. After all, I am a digger man now, aren't I? Just hot off the presses uh, half an hour ago, and as you can see, City Council on secret arms deal. The growth of the digger is staggering. In just two years, sales have rocketed from 200 copies a week to 10,000. but Cruikshank still sees room to expand his empire. One of the other drivers, the dri by that time, that's two years, these shops, from, from one there to 120 in two years. So if you think about another two years, we could have 500, 600 shops. Then Glasgow's gonna be ours, yeah. We're um, going round the uh, shops because Wednesday morning is the morning that the digger comes out. 125, is that all right or do you want more? Are you happy with that just now? So far all right. Right, so if you need a little... Yeah, you can know. always give it a call if you want some more. No problem. I've usually done most of my drop-offs by about half eight, nine o'clock. It's getting the, the magazines out that's sort of the first priority, so... Right, we've got a problem right away. Our new driver hasn't delivered the magazines here, so we don't know what's happened. Hi, Arne, it's James. I've just been, I've just started on Byers Road and I'm up at 24 seven and they don't have their diggers yet. I've been trying to ring since about half, since about six o'clock and then I just gave up. It's now after seven o'clock. 
She got the magazines at six o'clock, and there's no signs that she'd, she's delivered one magazine. I now want to know is, where are those magazines? You think you could end up taking somebody on just with dump your diggers out? You could take somebody on who's got a grudge against the magazine and you don't know it. And then you've got a wee spy in your organisation. He sees enemies everywhere. Is it paranoia? Or is there something to it? I think he's got some good that he's trying to, to do. I just think that it shouldn't think that the communities are so stupid and silly that they can't, they can't be allies. I'm working as the digger's court photographer. My next assignment is to photograph an alleged sex offender. But the camera jams at the crucial moment. Fuck! I don't know if that's a guy. out on us too soon. I missed him. Fuck that up. Shit, I'm getting too much into this job. Oh, he's off now. He's like sprinting. Oh, creep. Yeah, it's not very good. It's crap. It's not, it's not very good. It's useless. I go out again, determined to get this guy. I am the bigger man. As soon as he sees me, he's going to turn and run away the other way. So I've got to get that photograph, make sure that it's focused. And I've got it on his face, any part of his face. I've just got to get his face and not the back of his head. But he's out of me too soon. I've cocked it up again. There's no way I'm letting him go this time. That's through here. Oh, shit. There he goes. Quick. Gotcha. Come on. So I finally got the shot I've been waiting for. But though I've nailed this guy, something doesn't feel right. Has the buzz of the chase clouded my judgment? I decided to put my concerns to Crookshank. The one thing was my guilt about doing this guy. At the end of the day, I pumped up, I get him, and there he is. And it's just a thought, what happens if this kid gets, you know, seriously done over? 
Right. I just thought in my head, I thought, okay. I don't know, I felt a bit guilty about it. Look, look not... okay, okay, let me, let me answer it with an example, right? If I'm selling knives, right, and someone buys a knife and goes out and uses it to kill someone, is it the shopkeeper's fault? See, I don't think it's my fault if some pedo gets his head done in because I reported it. Front cover. That's him. The photo is all over the city. Sure he's guilty and has been convicted. Isn't that enough? People like that should be strung up and I don't think the courts are heavy enough on these people. Do you think this guy, if he gets a doing from this photograph, is that okay? Aye, he was a pair of it, aye. No, he can prove he's a pair of it, aye. As long as he was found guilty in the courts. He deserves it. Yeah. Then we come across two guys who have their own story to tell. Whilst I was in prison with Brian, there was a contract put on him. Yeah. For a half ounce of heroin or whatever it was that were paying, he get Brian either stabbed or slashed. That's what they put out in Brian, and I don't think it's very fair that any paper should treat anybody that way. And that was the digger? Uh, and that was the digger, aye. You're saying that the digger could have ended up getting the guy killed? Aye, we basically did, nearly, aye. In this, it says that Brian Lamont is a grass. And I'll tell you right now, Brian Lamb is not a grass. Brian, I have never grassed anyone in my life. He says that you called him a grass. Well, he is a grass. I had a bag of bullets in a magazine that I was caught with, right? Yeah. And I went to jail for and I done it, I done the time, I done the time for it, right? Yeah. But then the digger all of a sudden come out with these names. Not only did Lamont tell the police where the ammunition was, he told the police where the ammunition had come from. And he also told the police that the people that gave him the ammunition are gangsters, dangerous gangsters. Yeah. And he named the gangsters to the police. Now that's a grass. The people that are mentioned in this are heavy, heavy people. Right, they're heavy people that could get me took out and done in like that, right? Yeah. So if it was true, why, why, why haven't I been done in? Why haven't I been took out? The thing about court reporting is it exposes and shines a light on these cretins, and they absolutely hate it. He could have put me in danger in prison, and he went ahead willy nilly. But you get some people that don't listen to facts. They read something in black and white and think it's true. And before you know it, I could have, my, I could have been tanned. I mean, Glasgow's full of people like that. They've got no job, they've got no income, they dabble in drugs, they dabble in guns and ammunition, they think they're gangsters and they're just punks. And I use that in the American sense, punks. That article could have cost me my life so he could sell a digger. Am I supposed to feel sorry for him? I don't feel sorry for him at all. He's a twit. That article always got me killed. You're going to end up mentioning the wrong person's name or whatever, and it's going to, they're going to, and you're going to cause yourself trouble, mate. People all think the digger's brilliant, this and that. It's a load of shite. See if I was new and licensed, I would fucking do you. For the digger, it's business as usual. As features reporter Chris goes out on the trail of a gay brothel. I'd you like to have fun, fun, fun. Caution, slippery surface. That could be a gay brothel. Back at base, Aaron mans the news desk. For me, it's back to the sheriff court, naming and shaming the bad guys. I'm still a digger man, but somehow it just doesn't feel the same. That's me finished with it now. Won't be doing any more photographs for the digger. I've just had enough of it. It's just, it's really, it's too heavy. Gives a good insight to how the digger operates and you know what it's like in the, the world of the digger. But truthfully, it's not really a world I want to be involved with uh, anymore. So what is it all about? Supporting the little man, naming the guilty, or just boosting paper sales 
and never mind the consequences. I feel sometimes it goes completely over the top without enough evidence. And if it was, if it was a mainstream newspaper, it would be getting its ass sued off. He'll say that he's trying to clean up the area, that he's trying to stamp down on crime. That's me. That he's going to stamp down on corruption. St Jim. Yeah. St Jim. St of Jim. the poor. St Jim of the poor. Yeah. If he's saying that, that's what he's saying. He's saying he's trying to stamp out. I think if he's thinking that, he's deluded. I visit Crookshank for the last time. He's on the move once again. So many boxes, I think I've got... God, it must be 15 boxes. Just the, this stuff. You've got furniture going as well. Oh, it's all going. Everything? Yeah. I'm uh, moving out of this flat and um, I'm going underground. Underground? Yeah. The threats are getting that bad then? They're, well, CID, Mary Hill CID calling me into their offices to tell me that I'm going to get assaulted. I think that's pretty serious. If violent criminals know where I live, if they're going to blow the flat up, they might damage other flats. I mean, I'll, I'll be out of here in an hour. All my stuff, everything, all my kit, my whole belongings, my identity, everything will be gone. So they've got you on the run? No, not at all. I'm just going to a place where I can operate better. The community is in chaos. I mean, they're blowing up property, they're destroying businesses, they're, they've almost got a free run of the city because the newspapers aren't reporting it anymore because it's the police. The police control the papers, and the police control the city council. I mean, this is a police state. We're in a police state now. Well, it's gonna be hard to win then. It's not about winning or losing. So what is it then? It's about selling papers. Crookshank had gone, vanished underground to continue his crusade. Whether the world of the digger is about right and wrong, or just selling papers, the punters don't seem to mind. When you're in the heart of digger country, only no news is bad news. Hello, could you please give me a phone back? It's regarding a paedophile. Thank you. I'm phoning after reading this week's digger. There's Mary him and meets the eye, and I believe it's something to do with the death of the girl as well. <laughs> <laughs>